But I've seen some recent interviews that you've done uh, about sexual function. Yes. And that, in almost everybody, changes as we get older. Is it simply a hormone issue? Because that's a big part of quality of life as we age. Is it simply hormones, or, yeah. or is it more than that? Yeah, you know... Um, and it's both men and women. Yeah, I, 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 I'm blessed because... Um, in the early years, uh, I was uh, almost, um, I, it must have been 35 years ago, I did a lecture in Long Beach, uh, just down the street from here. And it was at Ro Rochelle's um, hotel. And there was a whole group of seniors, must have been 70, 80 year olds in the audience, literally, you know, uh, the youngest uh, character I think was 65 in the audience. <laughs> and the room, room was packed and the topic was sex is a sizzle in relationships. And I prepared this whole talk that I went to great length and the script, manuscript did all this research, you know, how to please a woman and, and you know, what, what does it take to bring a woman to orgasm and, you know, what do men need to, to optimally perform and achieve erectile function and at any age. And, you know, I went through everything. And the, the, thing, the strangest thing is I'm doing this talk and in those days it was 35 millimeter slides because I've been doing <laughs> lectures for 35 years and now it's PowerPoint, right? And I'm changing these slides and I'm looking at the audience and I'm sharing with them this exciting information and I'm really passionate and jumping around like I always do and talking, and not one word, what, not one reaction, not one laughter, not one, you know, anything. And I'm watching the whole audience, I'm thinking, oh, God, I bombed. I bombed. You know, I'm just in my head, I'm like, I, I don't think I can get through this talk. I get to the end of a two-hour talk, right? The people line up quietly. It was just that generation. They come up each one by one, so that was a marvelous <laughs> lecture. And I have a few questions, you know. And so it, it gave me encouragement that, look, you know, maybe we just didn't have the same generational, mm -hmm. you know, gap there. And it was something they didn't publicly talk about sex. It was pre-Viagra, you know. So, <laughs> so here I'm talking about all these sexual things, very distinct. And, and so I wrote a, a current uh, um, uh, manuscript for um, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And it's published in their uh, Therapeutics Medical Journal. And it's, uh, I'm told it's going to be put in Harvard and Stanford and all the top medical libraries. But I, I did a complete review of of sexual function, sexual diseases, you know, certain things we can do to, to restore sexual energy. And so I'm really passionate about the subject. I, I, I think that there is a degree of sexual awakening that we need to realize that the human body um, uh, is an animal. We are, we are animals. And the moment we ignore the fact that dogs, uh, you know, are seeking a partner, want to have sex, uh, elephants are seeking a partner want to have sex. Uh, you know, the smallest little gnat is seeking a partner wants to have sex. And somehow, you know, we're trying to suppress this thing that that we, you know, we need sex. It's 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 an energy that that flows and it's okay and it's it's matching the chromosomes of of this significant other. Her chromosomes are different than yours, and somehow there's stronger attractions to people that have a different chromosome makeup because the same chromosomes we know from inter, uh, you know, brother, marrying uh, sister, or whatever that that we we develop, you know. Uh, genetic flaws so so we have to have these genetic differences so we're attracted and not necessarily that uh, opposites attract but I just mean the genetics mm -hmm. there's just certain thing that you just see a person and they say it's it's called love at first sight it's PEA phenylethylallylene it's the same thing that people eat chocolate they get this little rush of PEA and they go oh I like chocolate well it's it's this hormone that comes from the brain and it's it's literally been identified as love at first sight so there's there's this stimulus initially and then you have to have enough cortisol your adrenal function to even de Deal with the stress of seeking a partner because you know there's a little bit of uh, combativeness. You know, you're asking for a date or trying to figure mm -hmm. out what's your line, how you're going to introduce <laughs> yourself, and she's kind of like, you know, I don't know, is this character good enough for me? And so you, you got a little chase there, and you got to have enough adrenals to, to, to deal with the stress of the chase. And if you don't have that spark and chase, it's never going to happen because you can't get past the first to even get her phone number. Mm -hmm. So after you got her phone number, now we're there. So the next step is, okay, we're in this place where we're going to go away to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the rule of three, three dates. You know, you have three dates. She finally feels comfortable with you. Maybe she's open to you, and you have some great discussions because women love to talk. You got to learn. Are they kinesthetic, <laughs> auditory, or visual? Find out with a communicative style. It's a whole NLP thing that really helps. And then, you know, learn how each other is communicate. And then at the sexual level, how do you communicate? How relaxed are you with that? And, and sure, it, hormones play a big role. Uh, I think that testosterone is, is so overlooked that as it declines with age, we, we have to resort to Viagra if we don't have enough testosterone. The reality is if we have optimum testosterone levels and we clear out the harmful estrogens, we balance the DHA, the cortisol levels. Uh, there's even uh, malayan stimulating hormone, which is... Uh, 
gives you a suntan a little bit, and it also improves erectile function. So there's a number of hormones and herbs that I've discovered over the last 35 years that I think are integral part to taking, say, uh, a 56-year-old and help them to get the, the sexual ability of a 22-year-old. So now you have the maturity of age to be a little bit mm -hmm. more respectful and, and uh, maybe uh, have more fun in your life in the golden years, but at the same time enjoy sex like the best you've ever had in your life. So I, I think that uh, the mind, the body, the hormones all to go, go together. So, so sex is, is uh, a thing that you should have your hormones analyzed, make sure if there's any deficiencies, uh, we'll give you the right supplementation regimes, uh, a good exercise program, good mindset, and get to sleep early. Sometimes morning sex is the best. You go, you're up too late at night, the hormones aren't where they are, and, and men sometimes can't find that they can perform. And I think there's another problem with sex, and that is that there's this whole thing with this pressure of men to somehow uh, achieve an erection and please the woman when uh, Kinsey and Masters and Johnson stated clearly that it's very difficult for a woman to achieve orgasm through, through intercourse. That basically uh, there's about 12 different areas, sensitive areas, particularly the clitoris, which uh, uh, winds around down into the G-spot. And the G-spot is just the extension of the clitoris. So once a man understands that most women love to use a vibrator, they'll take a vibrator over a man any day. And if you just teach a woman how uh, through oral sex and, and I call Call it water sex by taking a little water apparatus and applying it to the right pressure to the clitoris area. Um, you know, uh, engaging into this whole pre buildup, particularly talking to a woman. I mean, there's some very nice sexual, that's why romance novels are so big. They sell more than the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, women love to read romance novels. They see themselves in these pictures. So you got to create pictures for women, tell them stories, and kind of lead up to the date. Text your woman, hey, I can't wait to see you tonight. I'm really looking forward to seeing you. And just really loving, sweet things. And then by the time it all comes together, it's just massive explosion of sex and energy and juice. And it's it's an animalistic thing that's, that's sensual. And you're in that moment, it's, it's like uh, better than anything you've ever experienced. But then there's this dichotomy of love and hate that comes in with, you know, relationships and divorce. And so the very person you love, you fall out of love with. And, you know, why does that happen? And, you know, I think part of it is just we have these expectations. we got to just step back a little bit and learn a little bit more about communication and love. Mm.